throughout the month of May, I've been watching a whole bunch of my favorite action franchises. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all five Bourne films from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all five Bourne films. Which ones do you love? Which ones disappointed you? And everything in between. One more thing before we get started. Next week, I'm going to do a video called 31 on 31, where I'm going to rank 31 action movies from six or seven different action franchises. You got Jason Bourne, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, Bad Boys, John Wick, Mission Impossible, 31 movies in one video ranked on May 31st. If you love action movie franchises, and if you clicked on this video, you definitely want to check that one out next week on May 31st. And let's get started talking about Jason Bourne. In last place is The Bourne Legacy. I actually think the idea of this movie is pretty good, and it's an interesting way to continue the franchise without Jason Bourne actually being in it. You have this side story about all these other agents out there and what would happen to them. But the specific execution and plot they picked was too convoluted. It focused way too much on kind of mumbo jumbo and there's really not very much action in the movie. The first action sequence is 45 or 50 minutes into the film and there's not many more until the big finale two hours into the film. Likewise, way too much of the dialogue is focused in on what pills they need to take, when they need to take them, and where are they going to get them. A little bit of that adds to the mythology and kind of builds out the world, but when this many conversations are just focused on, on pills, it's just not fun dialogue and doesn't make for interesting scenes. The cast, they're great. Edward Norton uh, as kind of one of the bureaucratic characters in it. Great addition to the franchise. I think Jeremy Renner, a nice kind of replacement for our Jason Bourne and teaming him up with Raquel Weiss. That's a good idea, but the way the characters are designed, he's on the run and she's responsible for some of the situations, so they're just antagonistic towards each other, which case they don't really have chemistry until too late into the film. And a big part of the problem for me is that for as much as it builds out the mythology, the actual plot itself just feels so inconsequential because the only goal of our characters is to survive until the credits roll. So you get to the end of the movie, they've survived, they're on a boat getting away, but they haven't done anything to catch any of the bad guys, expose anything about them. All of them are still in place to keep doing what they're doing. So you don't feel satisfaction at the end. You're like, oh, well, I guess the movie is ending now. In fact, the movie implies at the end that Pamela from the previous two movies has been set up for everything that's taken place. So the movie actually ended on a real sour note for me. In fourth place is Jason Bourne, a pretty good continuation of the franchise several years down the line. The action here is just as good as ever. Some of the standouts are the grease sequence as well as the car chase through the strip of Los Las Vegas, very cool practical stunt work that are just as exciting as anything inside of this franchise. Matt Damon is fully committed to the role and looks more jacked than he's ever looked for one of these movies. And just in general, they found certain plot lines that I thought did a good job of kind of fleshing the world out. And several years down the line, how would some of these government agents perceive of Jason Bourne? What would they want to do with him? The specific plot I thought was a little bit unfocused when we're going to a convention center in Las Vegas and we want to assassinate a guy, we want to bring Jason Bourne back in, we're bringing in like references to Edward Snowden. There's just a whole bunch of different things they're trying to do. And I thought the effort to try and give Jason Bourne this deeply personal reason to come back into action and we'll have a competing assassin that ties back to his origin story I thought all of that just layered a little bit too much on top of too much that it just didn't ring true anymore. It just felt like they're trying to force what came naturally before and they're trying to give answers to questions that I wasn't really asking. And by the end of it, it's less satisfying with where they ended the character at the end of Ultimatum. So at the end of it, I kind of wish they hadn't revealed some of the things that they revealed in Jason Bourne and left things where it had been before. But at the same time, it still works as a good 
action spy thriller. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section. Also remember to come back next week. I've got that video 31 on 31 where I'm gonna rank 31 action movie classics from six or seven different action movie franchises. Or if at the end of this video you just want more action movie franchise rankings now, check out this playlist right up here where I've already ranked a whole bunch of the classic action movie franchises and you can get my take on some of those films. In third place is The Bourne Ultimatum. When this movie is good, it is excellent. It is some of the best stuff of the entire franchise. The individual sequences just do a fantastic job of building tension. As you see Jason Bourne kind of doing his thing, sliding through situations, but you feel like you're on the edge of your seat the entire time. One of the big standouts is the reporter sequence at the beginning of the film. It just does everything right. The action, as always, is very cool and dynamic, though I would say that they went too far with the shaky cam in this one, where there was very cool things happening at times, but there's just so many cuts and the camera's doing this so much that I couldn't see as much of it as I wanted to, and they went a little bit too far down that path. There's a few things that hold this one back from the top two for me. The first one is that I thought that Julia Stiles' character is used kind of weird in this movie. I don't mind that they brought her back, but when they start implying like a relationship with Bourne, seems like an odd addition at this point in time in the franchise. And then her character just makes the same face the entire movie. Likewise, it kind of repeats the car chase that was in Supremacy, and it repeats the beat where Jason Bourne leaves the guy in the car. So it seemed odd. Like, I think they were intentionally trying to mirror something, but it plays out weird for me, or at least it did re-watching it. And then the big finale, where they kind of deliver a whole bunch of exposition on his backstory, it works well enough, but it wasn't necessarily as satisfying for me as I think it was for some other people. So this is one that I think when it's on its A game, I mean, it is the best stuff of the franchise, but there's some other things in there that weren't quite as strong as the top two for me. Our runner up is The Born Identity. Actually, historically, this has normally been my favorite film inside of the franchise for a whole bunch of reasons. First off, I just love amnesia action thrillers with someone having this set of skills that they don't know why they have it. I just love that concept. And getting an actor like Matt Damon, who's known more for dramatic work than for action work, at least at the point in time when he was cast in this movie, you get someone that can really portray that in the film. Likewise, I've always preferred the way that Doug Lyman shot action over the shaky cam and close-up angles of Paul Greengrass, in which case the fights here and the action, I think, works a little bit better for me. Likewise, I enjoy the fact that he's partnered up with someone throughout the whole film where you kind of pull out his humanity and kind of discover a little bit of who he is as he discovers he does not like who he has been. Also, a bunch of just cool sequences in it. One of the big standouts for me is the one where Clive Owen is trying to snipe them from across the field and Jason Bourne is kind of setting up all these distractions and they're doing this cat and mouse game between back and forth between her to see who is the better assassin amongst the two of them. I think what holds this one back for me inside of this ranking is two things. One of them is more of kind of a mixed thing, but it's not really a spy movie. It's a road trip movie. And that goes back to the relationship between these two characters, but, um, and kind of them getting to know one another. But because they're traveling like this, um, Jason Bourne is more reacting than acting. He, he's trying not to die rather than going after people. So you don't get to see his skills in full display. The other one is I think the movie ends on kind of an awkward note. Like they didn't know how to wrap things up properly. And so it has this very bizarre kind of conclusion to it with the way it plays out. And they have this scene where he like uses a person's body to drop from like the fourth story of a building to like soften the fall. That doesn't work, and so um, there's a few things like that that kind of held it back for me uh, on this rewatching. but I love this movie. But coming in in first place is, of course, the 1988 miniseries, The Bourne Identity, starring Richard Chamberlain. In Robert Ludlum's best-selling thriller, The Bourne Identity. Okay, I'm kidding, but if you didn't know this, they actually adapted The Born Identity once before, back in the late 80s, as a TV miniseries. It's about three, three and a half hours long, and I've watched it. It's kind of an interesting experience because there's a lot of things that are 
point for point, scene for scene in the Matt Damon film. But then it's also a more faithful adaptation of the book. It's set during a different time period. It has some huge stretches that aren't in the Matt Damon film. So it's an interesting companion to see a wildly different interpretation of the same story, especially as like a TV movie back in the 1980s. But really coming in in first place is The Bourne Supremacy. Rewatching the movies this time, the thing that stuck out to me is that this is when the franchise really became a spy franchise. Jason Bourne isn't just on the run, he's turning the tables and doing his thing. So so once you kind of get past the setup at the beginning that kind of brings him back into this world, he's trying to hunt down the people responsible for taking away the person that he loved the most in this world. And he's trying to figure out why they're doing this and what are these memories inside of his head. And in doing so, I think in its own way, it gives it the character a lot more meat and flesh to him as he's having to actually deal with the things that he did in his past that leads to kind of the concluding scene where he goes and apologizes to the child of some of his victims. On the political side, there's even more intrigue because there's like multiple factions as to who knows what about who Jason Bourne is and what he's doing and why he's doing it. And so you just feel tension in every single scene, whether it's a spot action sequence or just the stuff where they're kind of going through the political side of things and these people trying to keep information from the other people and kind of working around them to figure out what's really going on or to cover up all the stuff that they've been up to. It has all the stuff that you want from a Bourne movie. It can be very emotional at times. It has spy stuff. It has the action elements, but with not quite so much shaky cam as you got in Jason Bourne and Ultimatum. And then even the political kind of espionage stuff in offices all of it very interesting. Put it all together and I think that this is the Bourne film that has the most to offer and is the most consistent from beginning to end. So it comes in at number one. Remember to come back next week for my ranking of 31 action movies on May 31st or if you want more action franchise rankings right now, check out that playlist right over there. If you've enjoyed this video, there's definitely something in there that you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.